Now I would like to, uh, to ask to take the floor Mr. Panagiotopoulos, Secretary of State, Ministry of Labor and Social Security of Greece, and kindly ask Minister Sapin, Minister of Labor and Employment, Vocational Training and Social Dialogue France, to come closer to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Honorable participants, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a privilege for me to address the 102nd session of the International Labour Conference at this crucial and challenging point in time. Because it is at this point in time when the burden of the economic crisis weighs heavily on the very future of work, on the essence of social cohesion and the path to sustainable as well as equitable economic growth. The Declaration of Fundamental Principles and Rights at Work, as well as the Declaration on Social Justice for a Fair Globalization, have established the policy platforms to address the challenges of the globalized economy in the spirit of the ILO principles for decent work and social coherence. They have been the guiding lights for national policy platforms in addressing the challenges before us, eliminating poverty, sustaining social coherence, fostering economic growth while safeguarding decent work, achieving economic growth while enhancing social justice in a context of sincere social dialogue and tripartite commitment. These are the challenges ahead of us. This is the spirit of the ILO principles. In light of these policy challenges, I wish to express my compliments to the Director General of the ILO, for, this, for his insightful general report to this year's international conference. The government of Greece welcomes the efforts of the ILO towards a profound and reinvigorated dialogue with other international organizations, including the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, in order to formulate policy objectives that would combine sustainable economic growth and decent work. We take note of the observation of uh, the Director General's report on the growing inequalities and the dilemmas raised for government policies to balance economic growth and competitiveness during times of economic crisis, as well as the effects of the increase in labor cost competitiveness in time of social and economic uncertainty. We acknowledge the contribution of this year's recurrent discussion on social dialogue under the ILO Declaration of Social Justice for a Fair Globalization. Today, more than ever, Social dialogue is absolutely necessary as an instrument to balance policy priorities of the real economy and decent work conditions, including wages. Now, with respect to my country, Greece, drawing our recent experiences. After three years of painful fiscal restructuring on the basis of a broad austerity program, the first positive signs of recovery are emerging. We are not out of the woods yet, but we are well on our way. Our national policies have taken into account the facts and figures of the real economy, as well as the social impact of the austerity measures we had to implement in order to cut public expenditure and tackle public debt. Nevertheless, the policy priorities we have implemented, quite painful given the harsh options we had to consider, have secured the core rights at work in accordance with ILO values. Our vital priorities are and still remain combating youth unemployment, getting the long-term unemployed, including jobless households, back to work and on their way to social integration, and providing a social safety net system on the basis of an integrated plan instead of a series of inefficient and fragmented interventions that were the case in the past. Ladies and gentlemen, the task before us is quite clear now. We must make sure that fiscal responsibility is not achieved at the expense of social cohesion. Through the painful sacrifices of the Greek people, we are now managing to put behind us decades of fiscal excess. However, if we proceed in balancing the budget, while at the same time wiping out the welfare state and sinking large segments of the population into mass unemployment and poverty, then we are risking social upheaval of an unprecedented scale in Greece tomorrow, elsewhere the day after tomorrow. If we focus only on fixing the ship's engine while eliminating passengers and crew, then, honorable delegates, this ship is bound to become a ghost ship. And for the sake of democracy, 
We must not let that happen because let us not forget that a downtrodden, despairing society is the breeding ground of extremist politics. So let us work together, member states and international organizations, workers, employers and governments, to achieve through enhanced and effective social dialogue a balance of economic growth, stable employment and social justice. Let us invent our own social multiplier. The task before us is quite clear now indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your statement. Now I would like to invite uh, Minister of Labour and Employment of France, Mr. Sapon, to take the floor.